before we install this thing, I'm just going to talk about engine triggering in general. Most OEMs uh, use three main basic types of triggers. First, you have what we use here for on the distributor. This one uses a magnetic type pickup, or uh, some people refer to it as a VR type pickup. Variable reluctance is what it stands for. Uh, I just refer to it as magnetic just for simplicity. Uh, what we're going to be installing here today is a Hall Effect pickup. And uh, another one that I don't have here currently, which is used by various other OEMs, Nissan in particular, is the optical style uh, sensor. But I won't talk too much about that one. So for the sake of today's demonstration, we are converting from a magnetic style pickup to a Hall Effect pickup. So what do you ask is the difference between a magnetic style pickup versus a Hall Effect? Besides from the, from the fact that a magnetic sensor uses two wires and a Hall Effect uses three wires. Well, the main thing is the, the magnetic sensor actually generates its own voltage when, it's, when it turns. You have a ferrous metal wheel here which rotates be beside a magnet and that actually produces an AC voltage. And this waveform that is produced is, is sent to the ECU and the ECU decodes that into our engine position and speed. So I'll just show you a little demonstration. Excuse my crappy drawing. This is a crude representation of what a sine wave looks like. So over here, this is like maybe at low RPM or cranking, this is the wave that is produced. And as the speed increases, this is not really to scale in terms of voltage or whatever, but I'll explain. As the speed of the, the rotation increases, the amplitude of the signal also increases. So the faster you spin your motor, the more voltage is produced. And along with that, they're very susceptible to noise. So I'll just draw in here a crude representation of what noise in a signal would look like as it speeds up. So maybe something, that's our noise. And as the, the rotation speeds up, the noise gets a little higher. That's just natural with the way this thing works. So this is your main signal here, and uh, see that's our noise basically. The ECU, when it's programmed, you would have, uh, say, this line here. So basically everything above this line is what the ECU would take in as an input for your crank sensor. So there would be actually a table in the ECU for voltage versus RPM, or some, some ECUs call it the arming threshold, some of them call it hysteresis, and this is something you would program in to like this line here. Let's say this line here is our arming threshold. The ECU will pretty much ignore everything under here and it will take this data in. So in some cases you install a standalone in a car that was working perfectly before and you go to start it and you get no RPM, no nothing. Sometimes the factory map may have the army threshold up here and then the, the ECU sees no RPM or whatever so you would have to, to lower this army threshold to a point that it would see something. And the best way to do this is to actually hook up a scope to it and uh, just take down, look at the waveform on the scope itself and take down what voltage is putting out good signal, if there's any noise or whatever, but we're not gonna really touch too much into that. It's one of the procedures I had to go through to get this thing here working with the MS3 happily. But enough about that. Out with the old and in with the new. What we're putting in today is actually a Hall Effect setup. The Hall Effect setup uh, works a little bit differently. You have, as you can see here, you have three wires. Uh, one wire will be a power, a ground, and a signal wire. In most automotive applications, this would either run on 5 volts or either on 12 volts. And uh, this sends out a digital signal, a digital square wave signal to the ECU, which is a much cleaner way of uh, communicating and uh, easier, it's easier to work with pretty much. So I'll just show you an example of what a square wave signal looks like. So as you can see here, voltage not to scale, but it's a clean square wave signal. It's either on or off. That's why we call it digital, it's on or off, on or off, right? So that's, a, that's pretty much a square wave signal. And one other thing I will note as well, this, uh, this sensor in particular is uh, 
open collector sensor, so which means you have to run a pull-up resistor on it. And uh, depending on which ECU you're using, some of them have a built-in pull-up, some of them don't. You'll have to see what you need to use for that. In our case, we're going to be soldering a 2.4K resistor into the harness. Uh, depending on uh, how much voltage you're powering the sensor with, you'll have to use a different rating resistor. Uh, we'll go over that in the instructions. There's a whole chart for voltage to compare to which type of resistor you need to use to get a nice clean signal. Uh, if you run no pull-up on an open collector circuit, the signal will look more like something like this. Pardon my crude drawing again. Won't be... The on and off won't be as pronounced. So you have to ensure it's running properly with the correct rated pull-up resistor. So in a nutshell, pros and cons versus uh, magnetic sensor versus Hall effect. I would say pros for the magnetic is that they're much more reliable in, uh, in a high heat environment, high stress environment. These, uh, these uh, Hall effect sensors are a little bit more delicate in the sense that they don't like high heat environments as much. Uh, cons for the for the magnetic sensor, they're more susceptible to noise and uh, a little more time to get running right if you're starting from scratch on a standalone. Pros for the Hall effect sensor, you get a much cleaner signal and uh, it's much easier to get, get going on a full standalone setup. So that's pretty much the basics over this. Uh, pros and cons versus both in a comparison. Uh, we can talk a much longer about this, but this video is more to cover about our install here. I just wanted to give a quick background just on the pros and cons versus either of these setups. I'm gonna actually touch more into this distributor setup itself in particular. This is referred to as the Nippo Denso uh, pickup. Is driven by the camshaft. Uh, I believe the intake camshaft in particular on this setup. It has three magnetic sensors on it. 24 tooth wheel for the crank. On the inside we have a one tooth wheel with two cam pickups. That one tooth wheel is for the cam position. You have one pickup at every 180 degrees. On our MS3 setup we only ended up using one of those pickups for the cam and the one pickup for the crank. After using this I would probably advise to maybe cut off whichever one you're not using. I would rather cut off the one that's closest. You see how this this uh, cam pickup is close to the crank pickup. I would advise cutting this one off and running your cam signal from this one and your crank signal from that one. Get rid of that one completely because what happens when you spin this thing really fast you actually get a little bit of noise from the other pickup and it's not desirable. You get all sorts of trigger trigger errors with that. Another thing that I would like to note about this setup, because it's not very well suited for high RPM applications, is because it's driven by the camshaft, you have a little bit of deflection in your timing belt. And because of that, uh, on an OEM setup with like stock cams and valve chain, it might not be that big of an issue. But once you start upgrading your cams and putting heavier valve springs, you get a lot more harmonics in the valve train. And I feel like that causes trigger errors on this sort of setup as well. The trigger error is usually caused when the, the cam tooth is missed and it can obtain synchronization. So the trigger event has to take place between the crankshaft teeth. As you can see, the cam tooth is positioned between the two crank teeth here. It's hard to see in the picture, but I guess you can see it. So that's also very important. If that trigger event lines up with, say, a crankshaft tooth, that's, that's basically an error. Then this is why I'm going to elaborate on why we ended up using the 12 tooth wheel. So here's a 12 tooth wheel next to a 36 tooth wheel. And as you can see, on the 36 tooth, the teeth are much closer together. And having more teeth on the, on the crank sensor is excellent for resolution. At low RPM especially, it helps with cranking. Uh, you, it, won't take too hard, it won't take too much time to start the car. You won't have to crank it like hell to get it started. Because you get a, you get a input, to, the ECU gets an input fairly, fairly quickly. It gets updated basically, right? This air gap in between, when it goes from one tooth to another tooth, 
the ECU doesn't know what's going on in between. So if there's a quick change in engine speed in a short period of time, that may cause a little bit of timing drift. But what the problem is, when we start getting into higher RPM applications, as I said earlier, the cam event has to take place in between two trigger teeth here on the crank. You can see the margin of error now that we have. There's less margin of error on a, two, on a wheel with more teeth versus a wheel with less teeth. So I would say this wheel here is better suited for high RPM applications. We're going to race the car. It's not really a street driven car, so I don't care if the timing wanders at low RPM. I'm more concerned about it wandering at high RPM. So a wheel like this would actually be a lot more accurate in a high RPM application because no matter how fast the processing speed of your ECU is or whatever, you always have mechanical factors to worry about as well. Because even though this will be mounted directly on the crankshaft, the cam sensor is mounted directly on the camshaft and as I said, said earlier, there's still a little bit of belt deflection and harmonics, etc. that may cause this to deviate a bit and maybe cross the path of one of these teeth and we may get a trigger error like that. So having the crankshaft teeth further apart like this gives us a little extra room for error. So we can avoid those trigger errors at high RPMs. I just wanted to touch on that a little bit as to why we're using the 12 tooth wheel over say at 36. So let's just get on to the install and get our hands dirty.